The Good Shepherd, first of all. Uh, first directorial outing by Robert De Niro since um, Bronx Tale. I keep saying since this boy's life. I keep confusing those two movies, but there we go. That's just because my brain is slowly addling in its 43-year-old way. A very lengthy thriller. I, I, and I say lengthy. I mean, it's like two, two and three-quarter hours, best part of, about the birth of the CIA, starring Mr. Charisma himself, Matt Damon. Now, you've seen... Um, to Team America World Police, right? Yes. Well, the, ga- the Matt Damon gag in, in, in Team America World Police is that Matt Damon is a wooden puppet who can only say, Matt Damon! That's all he can do. And that he gets to make that joke three or four times, and every time he does it, <coughs> I laugh out loud. And every time I see Matt Damon since Team America World Police, I find it very hard not to go, Matt Damon! Anyway, in this, he plays a character who is meant to be impenetrable. Good piece of casting, because the fact is, Matt Damon is fairly impenetrable. He's not a man for whom emotions register large on his face unless the emotions are why is it that I look like a 12-year-old when everyone else around me is 46? Story starts off in the 1930s when he is a, um, a student and he is approached by a sinister figure who asks him whether he can shop his poetry, stu- his poetry teacher, Michael Gambon, who is, uh, at least we think, is a Nazi affiliate. He does that. They then think that he's maybe one of the kind of Ivy League kind of guys that they want for their spying network and he gets called in by Robert De Niro in a cameo. Robert De Niro, the director... Robert De Niro cameoing in the movie again as a sort of Basil exposition character who turns up every 30 or 40 minutes just to put us on the on the path of where the plot's going again on the plus side it's well built I mean Robert De Niro does know how to put tab A into slot B as far as you know building a, a, this kind of thriller is concerned the whole thing has a sort of moody uh, creepy slightly paranoid but you know done seriously serious subject seriously done and seriously taking a long time to seriously make a serious point it's quite Fine. a serious film it is a very know. serious film the laughs are few and far between at the centre of it we have Matt Damon and the central thing is that he is supposed to be torn between on the one hand his personal life at the very beginning we learn that he has a, a secret which is that his own father just before he committed suicide said to Matt Damon never never lie to any of your friends and then he killed himself and Matt Damon's character then kept the note to himself so he has a deep secret and he sort of puts this buries it blank face he then becomes a spy obviously being blank faced as a spy is the thing that you're meant to do and then his personal life sort of becomes compartmentalized now his personal life is the bit of the movie that i don't buy angelina jolie plays the woman who literally jumps on him to seduce him becomes his wife and then her entire role is being the woman in the funny dress who says i don't see you and i don't know what you're doing and where are you and and which is a strange bit of miscasting for angelina jolie in just the same way that matt damon himself is probably miscast in the central role because in order to be really involved as a sort of somebody who doesn't react to anything, you have to be somebody, I think, who looks more involving than Matt Damon. I mean, there's one problem around all this, which is that the, the, the cast ages as the decades go by. Everyone's hair goes slightly grey. Everyone's given a little bit of stipple makeup to make them look a little bit older. Bit of stipple makeup? Yeah, stippling. Okay. That's how you do uh, a old makeup. You stipple latex onto people's faces. It's a technical term that you wouldn't know about. Yeah. Max von Sydow get some, uses, uh, get some stippling, yes. I've already got some on my face, as you can see. It looks lovely. And so the, the Matt Damon character remains not only blank, but actually rather too young to be convincing. And the whole thing takes too long. So whilst you're watching it, whilst you're thinking, yes, fine, yes, I, okay, interesting, solidly written, Eric Roth, one of the guys whose credits include Munich and, and Ali and The Insider, of course, which is a terrific piece of work, somehow it just feels rather plodding. It feels like it's not The Godfather. It's not, as Larry King says foolishly on the poster, the best spy movie ever made. I mean, it simply isn't. I mean, The Bourne Supremacy is actually a better spy movie because in the end, Paul Greengrass is a great director and Robert De Niro is a solid filmmaker. And he's and there are solid performances and everyone's in it. So there's a cameo by Joe Pesci and there's William Hurt and there's Alec Baldwin and as we said, there's Angelina Jolie. Because Helen Mirren? No, she's not, because she was being the Queen at the time. But, of course, it had they rung Britain at that point to speak to the Queen, it would have been Helen on the phone. And I have no doubt that there's a director's cut somewhere that's four hours long that's got Helen Miriam in it, saying, you know, my husband and I... Wait for the box set and exactly. it'll be there. But it's, it's solid, and it's, you know, and it's well put together. It's just, to be honest, like Matt Damon himself, a bit dull. 